Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Luis Tello from Tiger in Oregon. Uh, I work in uh, Tiger Animal Hospital. And I want to discuss with you a few cases that we've been treating using Cruise products. And we're really happy with the results. So just some examples. Uh, you have to remember <laughs> we work in an emergency hospital. So not a lot of times we have uh, the cameras and the availability of people recording so much. But we have pretty good cases. So let me start uh, showing, uh, you know, our thankfulness for Cruz, you know, interaction with us and uh, the development of such a great product to deal, especially with wounds and burns that it, I'm going to say, is probably one of the most common causes for patients coming in emergency in our hospitals. So let me show you uh, just a few of the cases. Uh, Grinch is a ferret male uh, it was one year old uh, he was in a really really horrible tragedy uh, i'm gonna save you the details but uh, the house that he lived caught fire some people was involved a uh, big tragedy uh, this poor guy was trapped inside his cage at the moment of the fire uh, nobody realized that he was there so firefighters find him uh, with severe wounds, everybody thought the Grinch was dead. Um, so, intermediate to severe level burns. We calculate around 50 to 55 percent of the body surface. That contained normally a high mortality. Uh, the whole hospital was put on on top for Grinch. Uh, we have a doctor who is really good with exotics. I try to help a little bit with management of wounds. We, at that moment, start thinking what we can do for this guy. As you can see, there's uh, the classic severe burns that is at least what you used to call third degree. It's called full thickness now. Um, the animal went into resuscitation, stabilization, all the other parts. I'm talking about fluids, pain management, uh, oxygen, respiratory thing. He have a little bit of burns on the airway. So uh, in, in, in the second part, we start taking care of the wounds. Dr. Glessonier, who is one of my associates, uh, took care of this. She's really good with exotic. So we start using that is the, the way Grinch was after the first stabilization. We had a lot of concerns uh, at that time about this leg. I was pretty sure that there was some bone damage, what we call four degree, or full thickness with uh, osteo involvement or bone involvement. As you can see, uh, there's carbonization and there's wounds all over the other place. So we start cleaning the writing, moving all those uh, with sailing at that time. It was tiny, this guy, so we couldn't use the big diffusers, uh, the flashing. We used flashing by syringes. And soon after, we started using honey, uh, the Manuka honey that Cruz provides for this effect. And uh, we could, you know, feel the improvement day by day. Grinch was brought to the hospital pretty much every third day, so twice a week. They have to drive like one hour and a half uh, from their leaving town to our hospital. So we really appreciate it. We try to make sense too. Uh, so after the initial treatment with the Bryman, scarectomy, cleaning, uh, we start just applying Manuka honey and putting some bandage in areas possible. Uh, ferrets do not do well with bandages. It's a little bit like cats, so they fight that. But uh, the usage of the honey was promoted. We send that for the days not in the hospital. And we keep going with this, simply cleaning and honey applying. Uh, in a moment, we decide that this paw was not visible and viable anymore. Uh, for neurological amputation was decided while we keep coming with the same care. As you can see, the severity of the wounds uh, there are some areas that we have some concerns about vitalization and the secondary healing. But Grinch was surprising all of us. He was uh, systematically getting better, more energetic, more happy, start eating. Uh, the, man the management of uh, pain was very successful. And we keep going. Uh, Manuka honey and care and cleaning and the Um So... Finally, the front paw was decided to be amputated. 
there was no blood flow into that leg. Uh, you can see the other legs where, where this poor guy was in probably uh, touching the cage who was metal and in the fire. Uh, so in the small areas, we start using instead of the uh, liquid honey, we start using the patches and that was a pretty good advantage. These are small bandages that provide a little more stable. Uh, and we started using that with some degree of bandaging and Grinch was doing pretty much better. So to make it short, this, this was <laughs> 22 days, a little more than three weeks of this. Uh, you can see in the photo the way he was and the way he ended up. Uh, like in third degree burns, there's permanent scars, but if you see Grinch, he's a very happy boy. And this creature recovered quality of life. The owner was incredibly thankful. We were really happy, our whole staff, and, and, and we truly believe the Manuga honey was a, a very, very efficient, simple, and affordable treatment. I forgot to tell you that there was uh, some degree of financial concerns, who is kind of common now with the COVID and everything, what's going on. So we were happy that uh, we were able to provide uh, an affordable treatment. Uh, all the other alternatives were uh, way more expensive. In a moment, we thought about biological graft, but uh, the expenses on that was not possible to cover by the owner. So happy with this, Grinch went home after three and a little more than three weeks and a change. So that's one of the cases that we really like it. Let me show you Baba. Uh, I, I, I showed this to my colleagues. Because in my impression, this was a classic mistake when you treat wounds, especially by wounds. Uh, Baba was a, is a female lab, eight years old. She was attacking the part for two small dogs. It looked like probably chihuahuas. Those are the classic thing. That is the, uh, he went to primary care. What we know and the records that they give Baba an injection and antibiotics. I think we know which one it is. And send it home with some pad with chlorhexidine for local cleaning. Uh, we could see that there was some, a couple of stitches, uh, some, some sutures were using um, to approach the borders of some wounds. So we don't see that, we didn't see that, but after 72 hours, so a, a, a little less than three days, the owner was not really happy. Uh, Baba was getting really, really depressed, lethargic, and she was concerned about a very faulty smell. Uh, the, the wound was smelling really bad. And Baba was showing symptoms of decompensation and a lot of pain. So she came for a second opinion. We just started analyzing and it was very clear that the wound was not healing. Uh, and on, on exam, we couldn't see the sutures and the bite wounds. There is definitely not the right, you know, direction for healing. So we decided to intervene. Um, the wounds were all contaminated and infected. That was very clear. There was some degree of correct to me. So some of the tissue were not vital. Uh, a simple removal of the sutures proved that the, uh, the skin in certain area was completely not vital and we had to remove it. So we decided to do a surgical debridement. The treatment was discussed. Euthanasia was discussed. And we put again on the table the usage of honey, like Manuka. Uh, we mentioned the cruise product. The client say, okay, let's give it a try. What do you think? The classic conversations on this case is you think it's gonna make it. Let's give it a try. It was not crazy expensive. So again, these clients live outside Portland. So in, in an area who is 45 minutes away, it's still a uh, drive. Baba came to us and this was the picture when we start removing tissue of pre debridement. Uh, this ne needs a surgical debridement under anesthesia. The dog is heavy sedated and went heavy, heavy, heavy analgesia. Uh, severe opioids combined, etc. Uh, we took this photo and the client was really impressed, upset. The classic conversation how this is possible? Well, we tried to discuss that bygones could be like this. Uh, there is a lot of changes on the tissue metabolism with bites, the blood flow, the way the inflammation produced, and the laceration and the appearance, the you know the creation of third space. Um, so 
we stopped talking about what happened and we started saying, okay, what we're going to do. And we went into a pretty aggressive surgical debridement to start the, uh, the cleanment. Part of the debridement was they using these flushing units uh, who provide a good amount. The good thing about this unit is uh, it provides a large volume. So you can put a couple of gallons of saline uh, with Clorex or with Clorex. We use ring and lactate now instead for those volumes. And we start removing tissue. The, the devitalized tissue was uh, removed. It was cleaning. Uh, in a moment, the debridement was physical. So we have to remove definitely a large portion of the skin. There was certain concern about, you know, dehydration, the amount of water that these tissues transpire and is evaporated is, is, is large. So the pet received also some, a, a good support. We changed from dry food to canned food to provide more water. And we give some uh, suki fluids and IV fluids during the hospital. And then start the long term. Uh, after two days with uh, the Manuga, the results are incredible. As you can see, sometimes, depending on the temperature, the honey crystallizes and form this beautiful layer. You can see a, a nice healing process going on. Uh, uh, if you can see with more detail, sorry about the quality of the photo again. This is our phone photos. Um, and we keep going. We see the crystals there, but definitely this is going into the right direction. Clients were really happy. Uh, Baba was uh, with better controlled pain. Uh, the usage of NSAID has to be very cautious of this, uh, non-steroidal because uh, the inhibition, the prostaglandins also produce certain degree of uh, delay on healing. On six days, this was much, much better. Uh, we tried to put some kind of like diapers around this. Uh, we tried to use the tubular uh, bandage that uh, also crews provide to keep the honey in place. It was, as you can see, it's a, it's a large dog with a large portion of the skin. Uh, but we were, this definitely was going into the right direction. We just need time and keep going. Uh, 14 days, uh, there was a clear approachment and the wound was closing. I knew this is going to left probably permanent scars because the amount of tissue, but we didn't know at that point. Uh, we discussed the possibility of doing a graph. The owner were not interested in that because cost. Uh, and well, to make it short, 20 days later, uh, the wound was very retracted, small, no painful, definitely uh, in, in the right way for healing at this process. So uh, we were really happy with the Manuka. The clients were really happy. The, again, uh, we were really, <laughs> you know, never considered uh, discussing again about the euthanasia. That was a good thing. That dog was a really nice dog. Baba was an adorable dog. So, uh, at last, I'm going to show you Bongo. Bongo is a cat, male, one year old, very investigative. So this is a cat, the classic black cat who walk around all the house. Well, the owner was cleaning the bathroom and the shower, and she used concentrate bleach there. She didn't dilute it, and she forget about it, and the cat walk in. So uh, she came to the hospital. She didn't know what had happened, and we realized that we, there's burns in some of the pads. We investigate. Curiously, only two pads were compromised, two paws. Um, and we discussed the possibility that the cat just jumped there. We, we, we never got to know. But um, we start treating this. It's a very painful bleach. It's a complicated burn chemical thing. The, the chemical of that is an alkaline thing. It's not like acid who are more, much easier. The alkaline look for water, so it goes really deep into tissues. Uh, it's very painful too. So treatment for us was analgesia, sedation. We use some opioids for this. Uh, for sedation, we use the, uh, the cutting magic. The extometer has been used pretty nice. And for analgesia, we give some CRIs of fentanyl or hydro, uh, hydromorphone. Uh, under dire circumstances, we start cleaning and flushing. We clip all the hair. And then uh, the plan was done, how we're going to approach to this, and we decide the bandage uh, and the manuka, because it was a very small portion, it was easy to bandage, and it, it permit this to stay a little longer, and make cleaning and re-bandaging every, I mean, twice a week. 
Uh, Bongo was uh, a nice cat, so it was, as you can see, the, the type of burns. Uh, that is the bandage that Cruz provide, who is uh, infused with Manuka honey. And that's what we start using. We apply it, that was the position. Uh, it's really easy to work. It's a, a little more sticky than regular bandages, and you can bend that pad in the way that you want. So after that, we put the bandage, a classic bandage with that, with the bed wrap, and that was the final thing. Uh, it was very clear, the rapid response of uh, this cat to the treatment. Uh, four days in one of the rebandagings, the wounds that were very visible with some scar tissue, uh, and the clients sent this kind of like two weeks or two and a half weeks later. Uh, she didn't come again, who's very classic in this, they can only for the emergencies. So uh, this is the few cases that I wanna show. I hope uh, this can prove you guys how useful is a honey and cruise product for the treatment of wounds and burns. We are really happy with that. And we're really happy to be able to work with cruise. Okay, have a great day guys, thank you.